Hi everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to make a quick video about um, empath and I actually wrote it down because I don't want to get distracted because if I start talking I go all over the place. I start with empath and I end up with Adam and Eve. Um, so anyway, I wrote down the signs of being an empath, being an empath. So if you've done research already or if you feel like you are an empath or if you already know you're empathic, intuitive, highly sensitive, then this is confirmation or it's just maybe even new um, information for you. Anyway, I just wrote it down today because I didn't want to forget anything for this video. Um, so the term empath is like has been around for quite a while now and I feel like in the spiritual community it's like this big um, term and maybe people try to use it as an excuse or whatever um, and I want to talk about that it's like not um, I think as empath a lot of times we think we make things up um we think we are weird for being so highly sensitive uh for being highly aware because empathy is just being really aware of things being aware of people's needs being aware of um our environment being aware of you know noises and smells and stuff and um I think this is also affecting, um, you know, there are more terms coming up now or has, have been around for a while now, like light workers, star seeds, um, collective shamans or rainbow children and whatever resonates for you is the one that matches uh, and that is for you because you know best and your intuition knows best and I remember I don't know how old I was, maybe beginning 20, so 22, 23. I looked up um, being um, highly sensitive to um, noises because I kept making the same experiences with noises, voices, even smells, some yeah, like being very sensitive to smells, not in a way that I'm disgusted quite quickly, but that I smell a lot of things. Um, noises, voices, smells, temperatures and crowds. And so much more energy and so on. So I remember the like when I googled it and I tried to, you know, see what's wrong with me. <laughs> um, and I found a website where someone, somebody was talking about highly sensitive people and I felt such a, such a relief and such a uh, connection to what that person said and wrote. And I was like, oh my God, I finally know I'm not crazy. I'm not making that up and I'm not alone. And I think that's um, important and I love that the internet is... Um, making it possible to uh, for us to find community and like-minded people. So if you have been a highly sensitive child and um, an empathic child, you probably heard so many times, oh, you're so sensitive, get over it, you know, stop being so sensitive. And a lot of times as empath, we didn't really had a space or an environment that would receive us quite well 
um, maybe because our parents have been empath as well and haven't dealt with it and haven't healed um, their um, or haven't empowered themselves and haven't healed or like find ways to deal with their empathy besides suppressing it so when an empath who has been um, suppressing their um, abilities has an, ch a child an empathic child it must be really triggering and difficult for them but this is about us <laughs> so so you were a sensitive child really feeling a lot <coughs> feeling the pain of other people the frustration the moods the energies of other people the other um the pain of animals and this, maybe the suffering of nature even and you were probably really empathic towards the smallest creatures and you hopefully still are um like saving spiders and everyone was looking at you like you're weird or <laughs> saving snails or worms or um i spent my like t my breaks <clears throat> in school when it was raining saving the worms <laughs> Or um, I could not see anything dying. If I would see a documentary about uh, animal animals being slaughtered, I would just be completely heartbroken. I could not understand how that was actually possible, and how could how people could ever do such thing. Um, so. It seems like this like we feel through our because of our sensitivity we feel like we don't belong we don't belong in this world we don't belong with our families we don't belong like we are so weird and uh, why am I here and um, why why did I come here or why am I here I want to go home because this is not home and um, and this is very painful and that could um, lead to trauma and like feeling there's no place for us in this world so so we probably I'm going to read a little bit because I don't want to forget what I wrote down um, we were and we still are highly sensitive and intuitive beings. Um, we just know things and we sense a lot and we are just highly aware of things. We enter a room and we can um, sense the emotions and the vibes and the energy. We can read energy. Um, we are sensitive if, especially if we consider ourselves as empath and highly sensitive, I would consider empath sens being sensitive to energies and to people's emotions and moods. And um, highly sensitive, I would, I would define it as being more um, sensitive to sounds and smells and um, temperatures and. Um, light as well like i would like my eyes would hurt quite often uh which can also be vitamin d uh deficiency um so being low on vitamin d that's important um you you're absorbing people's energies and moods you have little boundaries and a lot of times which is part of the sensitive soul uh, journey and trauma is that um, we didn't learn to have boundaries and we grew up with um, family members or parents who would not encourage us to have boundaries maybe because they would have little boundaries that they didn't learn to have boundaries but also sometimes it has to do with our karmic contracts around um, empowering ourselves 
So we don't like arguments and fighting. We don't um, like uh, action movies with lots of brutality. It makes us feel like I wouldn't enjoy it. It's just like too loud and too aggressive and too much violence and it hurts. Um, we can stand loud and unaware people, um, unconscious people who are not aware of what they're spreading out, you know, being like loud and and what just comes to my mind at the moment is we always want to balance out situations. We want to balance out the moods or if somebody's really loud and expressive, we sh rather shrink. But I experience also the difference, like the opposite when somebody, some, like the environment is really quiet. Um, not like woods, or the, but like when you're around people and they're really quiet, you're more of trying to cheer them up or something because you seek balance and harmony. Um, what is that? Oh yeah, you you are intimidated and shrink quick, quickly around people, especially if they are inauthentic, unaware and unconscious of their own energy, because that we read energy. So if people don't read their own energy, we are so aware. Um, many of us are highly gifted, highly able to read energy and people and their um, and sense their yeah their energy and also sense if they need healing, for example. Uh, we can't deal with inauthentic people. It's weird. I don't know how to act around inauthentic people. It's um, It makes me tired and I listen to that by now and I try not to be around those people. Um, animals and children are attracted to our energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, dogs, cats. Cats are very independent mostly, so it's like, mm. but like, yeah, you probably recognize it. Um, it has, I think, to do with very pure and healing energy. Um, and um, just sensing that we have good intentions and we are, I think it has a lot to do with our, like the more I work with my own energy, the, the better I'm able to work with dogs. And I want to add something because I think dogs and children really love and appreciate and like clear energy. Um, clear energy has to do with I know what I want and um, and I think a lot of dogs need that to feel safe and stable. And children love clear energy as well because humans always think if I set boundaries, I don't love that person. Or I'm not empathic or loving um, enough. So I find other ways to give give them love through food, um, sweets or, you know, gifts. Um, and I sense that with a lot of people who maybe are not understanding that the love and the energy and affection uh, and clear energy they give to dogs or children. Sorry that I um, connected these two, but it's just because we can also s say all the animals, but I have personally more experience with dogs. So I use them as an example. Maybe you know donkeys or horses and you say like it's the same with them or pigs or whatever. Um, <laughs> and I just connect these two because they are very pure souls. You know, children and dogs are um, pure and they are drawn to pure energy. And dogs and children love, we always say like children love rules um, and knowing. Because like if you have, dogs will also 
push your buttons and um, test you. And children do that quite often too. And they don't appreciate someone who's wobbly in their energy. And like after, after like three times barking or three times whining and wanting that toy or wanting those sweets or wanting the treat, you give in. They truly appreciate, we think it's love to have little boundaries you know because we're more giving um but i think with children and dogs it's similar that they want someone they can count on someone strong in their personality and someone strong in their boundary and in with their energies because then they can count on them then they know what they can expect if you change your mind every five minutes, your dog gets confused and the child gets confused. And I think, um, don't be confused by it. like me taking using dogs and children. It's just like I have experience with both, and it's um, just we're very similar quite often because they they might cry or the dog is like pissed <laughs> when you don't. But we don't give love through like food or buying them or giving them any, everything they want. We, we love through clear intentions, pure energy, also clear boundary with like if the child is like cap able mentally to process that, obviously. Um, and now I don't want to keep talking because I don't know enough about um cognitive abilities of children i just mean that everyone appreciate like dogs and children appreciate your clear energy you know knowing what you want um because the, the dog knows what he's allowed to do and it gives them safety and stability um and they like to listen and they like to have a guide. They like to have the alpha wall, right? Um, and that's me because I have responsibility for them. And with the responsibility comes um, the need for um, clear intention and clear energy and clear boundaries as well. Anyway. Um, Oh yeah, they both um, like clear energy. The only ones who don't like clear energy are people who are not willing to grow and not willing to be accountable. Um, dogs and children appreciate clear energy and boundaries. And the only ones who don't like it are those who are benefiting from your wobbly boundaries, benefiting from your um, unclear energy, benefiting from you not having a strong, stable personality, being able to say yes or no and mean it, right? Um, those are the ones who are um, unwilling to grow, unwilling to look at their shadows and demons and um, rather like to be comforted instead of... Um, rather like being comforted instead of growing those are people who benefit from you not having boundaries you letting walk all over you you not calling them out for being unkind rude or unloving or not growing and not looking at their stuff so that was just a quick um Okay, I'm going to do it quicker now. Narcissists are attracted to you if you are an empath. Um, I'll make a separate video about this correlation narcissist and um, empath because otherwise I'm going to talk forever. Um, people who need healing and attention are drawn to you. And I saw that a lot when I was... Um, when I'm traveling or just being... Like, I don't know, somewhere 
Uh, I think it has to do with a very receptive, open, loving energy. So people who need healing are drawn to you and um, a lot of times they are not even aware of it, but you are, especially if you um, experience it quite often. Mm, you become anxious in crowds. It's too much to absorb. Um, yeah, you don't know how to react around inauthentic people. I said that already. Loud, unaware, unconscious people trigger you. Yep, you sense energies in a room. Um, you feel responsible for people's pain, grief, trauma, or mood. Yeah, um, that's the empath who is not empowered and is not having boundaries. You uh, you absorb people's mood and you think it's your own quite often. It's something we have to learn instead of absorbing the energy to observe it um, and become aware of it without judgment, without engaging, without um, being sucked into it, without um, and with understanding it's not our own. Like, okay, am I this? Am I sad now? Or what is going on? And um, we are so aware of things. We are so aware of collective things as well. So many times when we feel tired or drained or exhausted and sad, a lot of times when I felt that and I would follow a teacher or watch a video of a teacher of um, one of the teachers I admire uh, and they talked about a collective energies and I was like oh okay yeah I felt that you know that's the case quite often for us um, and it's important for us to learn when it's them or when it's ourselves mm. yeah a, a lot of what you feel isn't yours but others Feeling guilty for being happy and joyful. Um, it's important to learn to allow yourself to be happy. I think it's part of the empowerment journey of an empath to understand that we are allowed to be joyful and happy and choose things that are for our highest good. Um, to also cut people out of our life. And I know that is really difficult for empath because we feel so guilty for not taking care of everyone around us and for walking away that is part of our um trauma oftentimes it's karmic oftentimes it's been uh going on for lifetimes for us um i will make a video about past lives as well um, but it's been a lot of times we have this karmic contracts and this loyalty uh, contracts with people and it's so difficult for us to free ourselves from limiting beliefs and environments that keep us feel small and stuck um it's a daily practice to allow yourself oh I'm actually allowed to be joyful even though my neighbor is unhappy and even though people are sick you know uh, something important that we have to learn is we serve the world best when we are happy joyful fulfilled and um, and thriving <laughs> yep. Uh, we have this craving for peace, harmony, love and connection. And we sometimes seek for a long time to have this. Um, those friendships or relationships we feel like if somebody just gets us. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> mm, we have pure intentions. Um... Your energies. Yeah, I already talk a long time now, but um, you don't like pretending, playing games, tri 
restrict people uh, and you sense when people do that. Yeah, that's um, similar to inauthentic people and how to react or act around them because it's so confusing for us. Um, we often don't like playing games or trick people. It's just, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's not part of pure intentions to do that. You believe in the good in people and it's important to learn to not give your power away easily. And also to understand that we've been quite, uh, sorry for saying that word, naive, but we oftentimes believe in the good in people and we are giving a lot from us. So it's important to learn uh, boundaries and learning to be less naive and learning to um understanding that we have those abilities and we have this great awareness and many of us have these healing abilities and highly uh being highly aware and intuitive and that's why people seek us out something i had to learn the last time i was with a narcissist was to understand that I'm very giving, especially in relationships with romantic partners, um, and nurturing and nourishing and loving and caring. I heard that from people, but I know it's true. Um, and the thing is, we a lot of us give our energy for free and to everyone and we struggle with setting boundaries and and um, um, choosing us first something important to know is that not everyone is deserving of your energy and your time especially those who take a lot from you those are probably those who need the most of healing. But those are like narcissists and toxic people are also those who feed off your energy and take a lot without giving back. And it took me so much work <laughs> with a therapist and with myself to understand that not everyone is deserving of that and not everyone should have free access to my time and my energy. Besides that, I would have a full-time job doing that. Um, uh, you're giving more than you receive. Um, you have to, because you have to give and serve people. That's just your nature, being of service and nurturing and healing and nourishing as you love doing that. And yet it's important to not do that until we are on the ground, but to keep learning to set boundaries um, and give when we feel, when we filled our cup and when we feel um, whole and energized. You were, were a very aware and sensitive child, I said that already. You thought something was wrong with you <laughs> because we were so intuitive and aware and sensitive and people told us many times we're too sensitive. Um, many people treated you like there was something wrong with you. Um, and that has to do with your light and your love and people being triggered by, by you. You are very aware, you are very adaptive, like a chameleon, because we like to put people first and others first. Um, we like to give and we like that, uh, to make people feel comfortable, whole, worthy, we like harmony. And um, that's why we are rather adept to a lot of situations and be like a chameleon. Um, instead of asking first if that is nurturing for us too because we're such um, serving beings um, we rather adapt in every situation and it's 
possible and important for us to learn to evaluate first if situations are of um, of value for us too because we are allowed to ask a question is that of value for me too or am I just here to give all of my energy to that person you remember things you don't like disappointing people you make it, it up on others to not in order to for you to not bother anyone that's what i just said you weren't seen valued and told to you you were told you would be to be too emotional oh my god um highly empathic and then i have three key steps for the empath um and for the empath to be empowered has to do with seeing our gifts understanding who we are getting to know ourselves spending time which is done by spending time on your own and be a lot with yourself in nature you are drawn to nature um being with yourself a lot getting to know yourself and understanding that nothing is wrong with you there's nothing wrong about you you are highly aware you have nurturing nourishing gifts you are a gift for this world you are highly needed it's really important and you came for this bigger purpose which is sometimes not possible for us to define because it has a lot to do with our energy and less about our profession and getting to know yourself loving yourself and your gifts seeing the value in who you are, your worthiness, learning to love yourself, all about yourself. Also learning that it's not wrong that you need a lot of time for yourself. You're just really aware of things and this this planet is exhausting. And the third step is set boundaries. Learn to set boundaries with people. And, and that has a lot to do with energetic boundaries. It's not always communicated or there's not always a need to communicate it. It has a lot to do, or like even if you already love yourself and understanding this is who I am, I've been through shit, I love myself. Um, and if you really feel the love for yourself, that is already a boundary. And then becoming more and more, you know, we are already very aware and intuitive, but it's important for us to also accept and see um, this awareness, understanding like, oh, my intuition is a gift. I'm not wrong. I'm not weird. It's quite easy a lot of times um, for us to tap into our intuition and be aware and then it's important for, under, for us to understand why would I question this really important uh, powerful tool um, which is my intuition why would I question that why do I think I have to um, not listen to it when it's so obvious that it's like coming so easily to me, like, ah, oh, this person isn't good for me, or ah, oh, I shouldn't eat this food, or ah, oh, <laughs> this, I hate living in the city, I need to be in nature. Um, and we are very aware, we are intuitive beings. The most important step for us to empower ourselves is to learn to trust and listen that intuition and not questioning it. Um, and to listen to it more frequently. You know, the world and other people will always tell you what to do. And yet, you know quite well what's of service and best for your higher self and what isn't. So, and now this video got longer than I wanted it to be.
but I still hope that was helpful to you. That was probably not the last um, video about empath. Um, thank you so much for listening and until next time, bye.